Uh, George Galloway. Madam Deputy Speaker, I congratulate my successor as the yeah. Member of Parliament for the most educated place in Britain. Yeah. It was once said that the Glasgow Hillhead constituency had the highest pro rata subscription rate to the new statesman of any constituency <laughs> in the land. And he showed it in the erudition, albeit of a rather ruritarian state of affairs uh, in his contribution. And I'm grateful to him for tabling this and for giving me time that might otherwise have been appropriated by him uh, to make this contribution. Some chicken, some neck, as Mr. Churchill famously said. To paraphrase Mr. Churchill, some Secretary of State, some time. This is not comparable to Peter Mandelson being the business secretary in the House of Lords. This is a time of great international peril, where foreign affairs is undoubtedly the biggest single item in our inboxes. Must be true. There are millions on the streets. Well, it's certainly true of my inbox. There are millions on the streets about Britain's foreign policy. There are demonstrations daily, weekly, all over the country. People are seized of our role in international affairs in a way that, for someone like me, there can't be many members in the House who have participated in more foreign policy issues from the 1980s until now. I have never known a time like it when our people were so occupied, indeed many preoccupied, by our role in the world. And what I'm about to say is in no sense disrespect for the current occupant of the Foreign Secretary ship. Quite the contrary. He's a big improvement on his predecessor. He's a cut above his likely successor. I don't demur at all from the idea that Lord Cameron is a skilled international diplomat. Our problem is, as a country, who are forever lecturing other people on the quality of their democracy, now have an unelected head of state, an unelected prime minister, and an unelected foreign secretary, the second most important peace on the Treasury bench. And that's ruritarian. It's actually rather absurd if you start to consider it. As the Honourable Gentleman for Glasgow North was adumbrating the possible outcomes of a lectern being erected, just at that white line there, so that we could all, and the microphones would need to be adjusted, face that way instead of, Madam Deputy Speaker, facing towards you. That's ridiculous. If there was a will, there would be a way. The silence from the government in response to the procedure committees beseeching of them to find a solution to this is eloquent, as such lengthy silences always are. We have a situation where daily, if not hourly, new and dramatic foreign policy developments are occurring. Just this day, for example, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced that this port that's being built in Gaza, with the rubble of the homes destroyed in the bombing, including the skulls and the bones of the people destroyed with the houses and lying unburied under the rubble that according to Netanyahu this port is being built for the deportation of millions of Palestinians from the territory an act of ethnic cleansing of the foulest kind we would have expected a statement from the foreign secretary in the light of such a dramatic development but statement came there none and could come there none his able deputy, and I share 
the honourable gentleman's feelings for the Minister of State. A fine man, I've known him a very long time. He cannot possibly cope with all of this workload as effectively Lord Cameron's deputy in here, his vicar on earth in here. But even if he could, he still would not be the foreign secretary. We cannot continue to be a democratic country. We cannot continue. Uh, of course. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, I, sorry, of course. I will be brief because it is very unusual to come in after an adjournment debate has started and then intervene. Um, and it is important that everybody who does intervene stays to the end as well. Stephen. Madam Speaker, and thank you for that uh, strict reminder. Uh, does the Honourable Gentleman agree that if, if he or I was to secure an urgent question, it, the, the same principle would, be, uh, would apply? The Foreign Secretary would not be here. Indeed, cannot be here for reasons which are what? About architecture? Kindly guide me with your eyebrows as you normally do, Madam Deputy Speaker, if I am going on too long. I'm not entirely sure about the timings. Uh, of all of this. But as a matter of architecture, for a democratic chamber to be bereft of the presence of its principal diplomat, the country's principal diplomat, at a time of massive international tension, is completely absurd. Madam Deputy Speaker, for those of us on this day, on this day in 2003, our country went off to the most disastrous war that we fought for well over a hundred years. It was a disastrous decision, but at least it was a decision that the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary of the day were ready to and had to defend each and every single day. The debates, not many of us here now were involved in them except thee and me. These debates were of the fiercest and most urgent kind. But we may be on the brink of World War III, Madam Deputy Speaker. Little Macron may be about to march his legionnaires into Odessa, creating the gravest international crisis since the Second World War. And we will not be able to question our Foreign Secretary about it. We'll have to wait for the morning editions uh, to learn what the government intends to do about it. War in Ukraine, war in Gaza, maybe war against Iran, war in the Red Sea, war everywhere. Foreign Secretary, nowhere. Nowhere at least that he can be questioned by the people in this country who are elected to question him. That's the point, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is our duty to hold ministers to account. But by definition, in this situation, we cannot hold this, the occupant. We talk about great offices of state at such a period of high tension. There can be no doubt that the second most important office of state in Britain today is the Foreign Secretary, but he is out with our reach. We, we can't even, as we once did, rub shoulders with them in the division lobby. We can't even see him in the members' tea room. We can't bump into him in the corridor here. We cannot in any way impress upon him that millions upon millions of our Fellow citizens and our constituents have this or that concern, point of view on the great issues uh, of the day. This is untenable, Madam Deputy Speaker. I am seeking to inject some note of urgency and passion into this because it is an untenable situation. I wish that from amongst the members opposite it had been possible to find one capable of being the Foreign Secretary. Would have been much easier and this debate would not be happening. That was not so. None of them were up to the job. It's therefore incumbent immediately 
for the government to bring forward a solution whereby we are able to look in the eyes of the second most important uh, politician in the state and press upon him the political preoccupations that occupy the concerns of millions of us. Uh, Nigel